Hello everyone, welcome to today's session. And today's agenda is um, like non state functions, lambda, filter, map, reduce generators, and decorators. And we'll see if time permits, we'll cover everything, or else uh, we'll cover like as much as we can today. Okay, so now let us get, get started. Uh, the first one I'm just going to talk about is nested function. We are familiar with like the function definition. So I'm just going to directly tell you the nested function, how it looks like, and in the scope, variable scope, right? Local, non-local, and then the global, right? And we have gone through the nested functions. There are a few other concepts which are left, and we are going to learn it today. Let's have defining a function, uh, or else I can actually directly go ahead, you know, create a uh, program for our future reference. I can, we can keep it. So now, here we go. I'm just creating the Python file and this function nested example. Okay, so in the function nested example, I'm just defining the function. Hope you remember like now how to define the functions. It is using the def keyword, def. Then we need to give the function name. Next, I'm just giving demo. Demo is the function and function definition. We do have, let's say, for example, I'm having a variable name or message. I can say message equals to hello. Message equals to hello. And then I have a function here, like you know, this is an inner function. And functions within functions is known as nested function, that's it. And then here we go and define demo one. And in the demo one function, we do have, let's say, for example, message equals to, uh, message equals to world is open source. World is open source, okay? So now, uh, this is all about like, you know, the two, two, for two methods we have defined. Now, I'm just going to print I'm just going to print, print, uh, let's say message. And then I'm just going to call the demo one. Demo one is the inner function. And then I'm just going to print what is the value of message outside of it, okay? And then let us see, and what we are going to get the output here. I'm just going to call demo and uh, running, the, running the function. And in PyCharm, you can actually execute control shift of 10, and you can see that, okay? This is how you can actually see. Now look at here, what's happening here is the message in demo one is different. The message in message in uh, outer function, which is called demo is different, it is hello. And whenever we are actually assigning the value message equal to world is open source, the, the, this message value, like which is at line number two, it's not getting updated, it's still, is remaining like now we can still say see the value is actually hello here right and but inside the function here you can see it is printing like no message what if there is a requirement right now this is something which you have already gone through and then what if you want to refer the variable which is defined in demo okay which is defined in demo you want to see the value of message how do we see that now here what you can do we can define let's say we have multiple functions over here, but it is like you no know, hierarchical, and you can actually define, let's say, for example, demo one. You can call the value of, or like, you know, the outer function basically over here. In this case, the outer function is demo, the inner function is demo one. If I want the value of uh, message which is defined in the outer function, how do I get it? So I can specify, like, you no know, demo dot message, demo dot message, like this. Okay, now let us see, uh, oh, okay, something went wrong here, it should be here, like you know, demo dot message, demo dot message, okay. Now, here if I'm giving like you no know, message, it is giving, it is going to give me world is open source. If I'm giving like, you know, let's say to differentiate it, uh, I'm just giving like you no know, inner, inner function call, uh, or else I can say outer, message value, outer message value is demo dot message, okay? So now here the message will be printing world is open source, outer message value will be like no printing here, it's hello. And this is how we can actually refer the message value. And if I'm running this program here, you can see object, no attributes, okay? So one moment, 
uh, we can definitely give something like this oh, one minute guys and we can definitely refer that that is that is the nested function we can definitely uh, specify that so what is being done here let me try to figure it out uh, if demo is tier one okay we need to okay there is a there is a concept i'm just going to tell you like now if you are actually this error message just look at this error message like what it is saying like in you know, a function object has no attribute message demo message is not there so when it is like you now saying object has no attribute if you look at here this is saying like you now this function object has no attribute so far i have actually till, told you the syntax like you now the variable equals to value right let's say for example if there is a requirement of defining a variable message now we are defining message equals to hello let's say within a function if you want to define a variable we can definitely give function name dot variable name variable so this will define like um, within the function scope this variable will be defined and here we can define like another value now if you look at this error message what it is saying the demo dot message is not defined why because we are actually using message in this case ambiguity is there so what we can actually do here is we can give like no function name dot variable name so now function name dot variable name is hello now outer message value is demo dot message and the inner message is actually uh, message is like quality is open source now if i'm running this program if i'm running this program here you can see message is not defined okay we'll we'll identify it like now why it is saying message is not defined because it is now demo dot message right so now we can actually put it here like demo dot message so whenever you are actually having ambiguity we can for sure like you know, define like this like demo dot message here we can actually see the value is hello and then here i can see a message is a local variable within demo one and then here we are having the outer method uh, outer message we are actually trying to print that is demo dot message it is saying outer message value is actually hello and it is printing hello here now this is like now one of the use case the second use case is like we can definitely the same same syntax we can actually use to change the value of the, uh, the variable like demo dot message in this case now let me write another function uh, another program nested function and python file and here we go demo dot message now it is printing hello now what i'm going to do is like let us change let us change the value of let us change the value of uh, value of like no demo dot message demo dot message okay so now if i'm giving demo dot message equals to how are you and then let us see so far it was actually printing like my hello now the demo dot message was actually printing hello right so now you can see it here if you want to check that you can actually see it here okay we had demo dot message and it will be printing hello but here in the inner 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 function itself right in a method itself like in this case demo one we are changing the value of demo dot message okay this is quite possible now if i'm running this program here you can see uh, the value will be actually getting changed now earlier it was like you know, hello if you look at line number two it was defined to hello line number three is it is printing like you know, hello and in line number line number five it is defined as message as well as open source it is printing the message as well as open source as is then we are actually retrieving the value of message demo dot message which is defined at line number two in the line number line number seven you can see the value is actually hello here in the line number nine we are actually changing the value of demo dot message which is part of like our outer function here you can see how are you and it is actually printing how are you print demo message it is printing how are you while calling the function we can actually see it so this is one of the use case of nested function which was uh, not covered in the previous sessions so now that's all about the nested functions the next one i'm going to talk about is lambda lambda function is very much powerful and very interesting too guys remember like now how do you write lambda function lambda is very easy if you understand the concept lambda is a complex one if you do not understand the complex this uh, do not understand the concept well okay so now what we need to give here is like you know in the lambda 
definitely we are we, we are going to specify the variable or variables okay the value basically so like you know i'll just tell you like now how it the syntax looks looks like then we can have a expression expression now here let's say for example i'm just going to tell you um, i'm just going to tell let's say i'm just going to write a function let's say define a function Any function uh, let me maximize it okay now define uh, i'm just different or my function something like this okay and i'm just going to uh, take a number as input okay and then what i'm going to do here is i'm just giving four spaces for the uh, indentation and then here i'm just giving like return num plus two what it is going to do if i'm going to call this function let's say result result equals to or i can directly give like no print print equal to my function my function of 100 okay my function of 100 what it is going to do it is going to return 102 if i'm giving let's say if i'm giving uh, like you know 500 here so the result will be 502 let us execute and then see it in our session notes and now let us see it here okay and it, it is going to do the same thing what i've actually uh, like explain here if i'm running this program here you can see it is returning 102 and 502 now let us achieve the same thing using lambda so what it is doing it is returning num plus two now i'll do one thing i'll give you a very basic example to understand the lambda let us convert this function to a lambda lambda is actually very very easy let's say this is my function i want to convert it to lambda now what is our expression in the previous function here itself like the expression is like now it should return num plus two okay fine copy it here in the expression that's it and what is the variable variable is variable could be anything like you know for any number any number it is going to give us as num plus two instead of number if you give like now x and you can give like now x plus two instead of x if you want to give like now a you can give a plus two that means this lambda is nothing but like now okay, one line of function okay so now it is also known as anonymous function we do not have a name if you look at lambda is a concept lambda is there from edges and you can google it and you can identify what is lambda in mathematics okay and you can understand what is the concept the implementation of lambda is present everywhere let's say in python it is there in aws cloud also lambda function is there okay you can write lambda so now this is the concept like in you know, lambda we are going to give a value what it is going to return it is going to return us that particular number plus two okay so how do i call it let's say this is what i have defined and i want to achieve the same thing so i have just defined lambda uh, lambda it is lambda not lambda it is b i'm just missing lambda b here lambda then i think here also it is not lambda it is lambda okay uh, lambda okay not lambda so now here a equals a plus two now I've defined it like you know let's say for example my value my bell or you can say like now value of value equals to lambda lambda a a plus two now if i give like a print think about my function how you are calling the my function you are calling the my function using like another function name followed by you are passing the function parameters similarly lambda is here right and we are storing it in a value i'll just tell you in just some time like now what is a function are using you can actually understand that for for now just remember like now we are given here like you know value now here if i give like no value of if i'm giving like no value of let's say give me value of 10. now what it is going to do it is going to print as 12 control shift of 10 if i'm giving like it is printing 12. does the same thing does the same thing now here you can you can see like now what is a value right and if i want to print a type print type of value okay type of value let us see what kind of object it is it is saying like no, it is a function type object because 
lambda is a anonymous function and in lambda we can actually have anything let us this is the simplest version of lambda now i'm just going to tell you another case let's say this is lambda one variable this is how we can actually define that now if if i'm having like now the okay sorry i've just removed it so lambda this is this is what we have defined now i need like you know two variables that is like i'm just going to define a lambda of a comma b and then i want to return as a star b now how do i get this this is lambda now let us do one thing let us implement this lambda over here okay let us implement this lambda over here now what i'm going to do here is i'm just going to define my lambda function a b equals to a star b now here i'm just giving let's say result result equals to lambda of a b equals to a star b so we are, we are going to pass a b and it should return us a star b now how we can actually uh, like you know, call this now i can specify print result of result of now give me 10 comma 20 now if i'm giving like 10 comma 20 it is going to give me 200 what if i'm just going to give i'm just going to give 10 20 and let's say for example 2 definitely what we are going to get is error why because the lambda takes two positional arguments three were given so even if it is a lambda it is just a function so in the definition we are telling like the parameters are actually two but here we are actually giving like no three let me do one thing let me uh, document this in a, a program then actually a temporary file i can see like no lambda example lambda example okay now python file here we go so this is this is the error message what you can actually see now what if i want like no a list as a parameter let's say i'm just go, what i'm going to do is i'm just going to pass let's say, think about like a list which is having 10 20 30 40 and 100 my requirement is what is my result first element into last element this is my requirement like this is what i'm actually looking for and i want a lambda function a list will be input and we want the first element into the last element okay now whenever you want to actually write this let us give this one as list one or list one yeah list one or l1 now what we are going to do is we are going to write a fun lambda function for the same thing so list will be passing let's say i'm just passing a list as l1 the first element of l1 or i can say like ls1 or l list one um, for better understanding now here i'm just giving list one list one of the first element first element is zero and the last element is minus one if you're able to recollect the element indexing the element index starts from zero and that is like from left to right and we can also do the indexing from the last element to the first element minus one minus two minus three like that so minus one here so if i do this then this lambda is all set now let us do one thing let us uh, implement this in our program i've just given like a you know, list one of this one and here we go and i'm just saying like a you know, list of list one of this and just defining a list like the l1 equals to mm, here i'm just giving 10 2 3 4 5 6 7 and 8 so it should return as 80. let us see what it is going to return like i'm just going to call this as let's say value of this right and then i'm just going to call print value of then i'm just passing list one if i'm passing list one here you can see it should actually return us as actually 80. so this is how the lambda is actually working what if you were having like not two lists and you want the first element of the first list should be multiplied by the first element of the second list like how, how we are actually going to do that let's say i'm having list one like this and then uh, i'm having another list this this is the list one and i'm having another list that is list two 
in the list two i am having 100 here and then let's say uh, 2000 then i am having 3000 then i am having 4000 whatever it is and then i am having like no 10000 10000 okay so now what is my requirement i want let's say let us do it little little differently i want the sum of all the elements of list one and list two the function will be taking two lists and it will give us the sum of all the elements in the list one plus the sum of all the elements of list two how do we do it using a lambda function so the lambda function will be like this lambda list one list two and we want the sum sum of what sum of all the elements of list one plus sum of all the elements of list two this is how we can actually define a lambda so all set if you are actually taking this lambda function this is another one where we are actually passing two lists okay and let's say i'm just giving this is l1 and this is l2 and this is the lambda which is defined okay this is the lambda which is defined and and see a interesting thing if i'm giving a print over here like print lambda of this print lambda of this if i'm doing this it's not going to do anything where this just a definition just a definition we are actually not calling it to call it like well, let's say for example if i'm if i'm running this running this program like look at here what it is saying it is saying it is a function at this but how we are actually going to pass the parameters right we need to pass the parameters so we should not do this way what we can actually do we can actually definitely assign to a variable in the in the like the python console you can actually do do like this but in the program we need to do this way it is better like let's say i'm just giving like no, my val my val equals to lambda this one and then i'm just calling like a print my val of my val of we need to pass the list like l1 l2 now whatever the value is there it will be summed up and then we can actually get the elements it is saying like 19300 okay so now these are these are like you know let's say for example real time use case uh, you are writing a function like now in a program you are getting the error count from server one error count from server two or error details from server one error details from server two like some other details are actually there you want to write a lambda and then do the things on the fly you can actually do it lambda also in the lambda we can also um, pass uh, like you no know, dictionaries let's say uh, i want to pass a dictionary and dictionary i'm just giving like the info my information i'm just giving info i'm just giving like name name here is subu and then i have something like this a location equals to bangalore uh, bangalore and then here i have um, let's say some value here like you now that's a dob i just giving you like you now 0 1 jan let's say 2 0 nine zero something like this okay so this is my future data what so now here i'm just given like you know which is not realistic so now look at here so now name information is actually this one right so i have just defined it so data of what it should be like my key value right so like this so now this is my information now i want to write a lambda and the lambda what it is going to return is let's say for example location location is actually bangalore right if, if location is bangalore it should pick the location basically right so we can definitely do like another required well required well something like this we can directly use the dictionary methods like you know there are um, get items are there and then there are a number of functions are actually available with dictionary you can do that or directly you can actually deal with the dictionary values just for the learning of lambda i'm just giving giving an example this way like we can actually deal with dictionary list tuples you can do the combination everything is possible okay now i'm just passing here info okay now what i'm going to do here is it is actually i'm just taking info and from info i'm just going to return as info of location uh, info of or i can see it here like now that's a d1 dictionary one 
okay instead of ambiguity we get i've heard that like you know d1 of location d1 of location look at here so this is my dictionary now print required value of info okay required value of info so what we are telling get me the required value of information information is like on this lambda what we have actually defined and it should actually print bangalore if i'm running this program here you can see it is actually printing bangalore so now this is how we are going to deal with lambda there are certain huge cases like where we will be like now using lambda uh, let me give you some more examples of lambda in uh, real time we'll be dealing with that let's say lambda for sorting okay lambda sort so in the lambda sort let's say for example i am having a list of items okay let's say my list or i can say like a list one or something like info we can say info of, uh, info of, like you know, info is a list info of people and i have the info like this this is the first value second one and then third one hope you are able to recollect this is a list of tuples okay list of tuples so now here i'm having subu and here i'm having like you know bangalore and here i've just given like you know 2020 let's say here i'm having the park state the park the park and then uh, i'm just giving here australia and then here i've just given like you know let's say 2022 now here i'm just giving the verses the verses okay and then or i can actually take one more like you know d is there so let me take as anil so i can give a example better example over here anil then i'm having like no location as us and here till like 1990 for example right so now this is information if i give like no print of info hope you are able to recollect it is going to print the tuples sorry list as is it is actually printing now if i'm giving like you know print print shorted of right shorted 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 of like info okay now here you can see one thing here you can see one thing it is actually giving the sorted order of first element the what is the first element like you know, from each tuple is name so it is actually giving the sorted order of name so now here you can see the name is actually anil then followed by deepak and then followed by Subu. Now our requirement is some something different. What is the different requirement right now? I want the items from this given list, which should be sorted based on the location. That means Australia should come first, then Bangalore, then US. How do we do it? We are going to use Lambda function while covering like another you know, sorted function, right? The sorted method, and I told like now. We can use keys and in the keys we can actually define any function or we can actually define we can also define like a you know, lambda function how do we define the lambda function i'm just going to tell you that okay so now what we can actually do here is okay let me let me do one thing let me do like this okay first let me define a function let's say my key define my key this is my key and which we are going to take a tuple like you know, let's say tuple one okay and my key of tuple one what it is going to do it is going to return let's say i want to do the sorting based on the second element so i can say return t1 of one t1 of one means whatever the value we are going to pass the first element sorry the second element the index is one when second element second element right so now here i'm just going to do the same thing i'm just going to do the same thing and like you know here i'm just going to say key equals to key equals to my key key equals to my key so i'm just calling like you know, my key let us see like you know what is going to happen now run the program and then see it is like okay we need to oh, sorry we need to give the only function name so no argument should be given here 
my key so now here you can see guys this is little interesting little tricky too while calling the function we are actually using moon bracket right but in the key when you are actually using this like you know we'll be using the functions in filter reduce map everywhere so wherever we are actually going to use uh, like you know, the function name uh, the function name should be we the function name will be given without parenthesis the difference between function name and uh, function call is function name is actually just the name of the function without parenthesis function call you have to actually enclose in um, like you know moon bracket and then followed by the parameters now here you can see it is actually doing the sorting based on the location what if you want to do the same thing you want to do the same thing using like you know let's say this is my another function i've just defined another function i've defined like my function define my key let's say my key one of tuple one and i want to do the setting based on like you know the year to the last field right the last field is actually uh, nothing but like you know, zero one two that is the element number two so if i'm giving like an you know, element is two here you can guys look at it is like 1990 is here 2020 2022 this is not in the sorted order if you want in the sorted order of like now um uh, year you can actually call the key function my key one so here i can specify my key one the result you can see it here if you are checking the result here it is saying on like 1990 then 2020 then 2020 and all these things are actually happening so this is how you can actually pass the functions pass the functions to the sorted method reversed and all these things like no, wherever the function you need to pass as a key or as a parameter you can actually do it this way now what if i want to do it using lambda i really don't need this i want to do this using lambda how do i do it in this case <coughs> Let me write a function, right? So here we go. So this is what it is actually turning. So lambda will be lambda. Lambda in the lambda will be actually taking one element. Let's say I'm just giving like a t1, and it should return. What it should return? T1 of one. That's it. It is very simple. T1 of one. Then the action is done. So this is this is going to be like now how it is going to work with lambda let us do it with lambda let us do the same the same using lambda okay and here also let us do the same using lambda either you define the function if lambda is actually something uh, like uh, complex for you and you are not able to understand feel free to use functions feel free to use functions and then use it accordingly but lambda just one line code that's it you really don't need like no multiple lines of code and here we go and here you can see the result the same result it is using lambda and without using lambda so this is how we can actually use lambda urgent when required so one argument multiple arguments like based on your requirement you can actually use lambda so in short what is lambda lambda is a function like now we call it as anonymous function and lambda function can take any number of arguments we can pass two arguments three arguments five arguments but we have to pass the argument okay and then apart from that we can actually use lambda function a lambda function anywhere like you know, for the sorting and all these things so we can actually use it and lambda this is the last example i'll be just giving a last example of lambda we can use lambda within the function body itself right you know that is that is also quite possible let's say for example i want to i want to do some operations what kind of operation let's say so far whatever we have used lambda this is outside of the function let's say i'm just defining a function and then within the function i'll be having a lambda let's say python file here i'm just giving a function with lambda body right lambda in the body lambda in the body lambda with body right so now so now here we go here i'm just giving uh, the example like you know we can give meaningful names i've just given this name so that's fine so now 
here I'm just going to define a function, let's define, um, and just going to give a, let's say for example, you want to get the power of all the numbers. Okay, let's say if the number is two, two to the power two is actually four, and then two to the power, like if I'm input is 10, 10 to the power 10 is actually, um, it will be like returning 100 like that. Okay, how do we do it? Let's say I'm just giving like no power. My function is I'm just giving like no power. Okay, and which is going to take a number as input. And what it is going to do in the function body, I'm just saying like return lambda of lambda of what? The lambda of any number. Let's say if I'm giving a what you are going to do is you can actually give it as actually okay let me let me do this way and then i can give a very simple example now a into num or a into let's say num something like this okay this is a this is a dynamic one okay so now here what it is going to do like we have to pass the lambda function and then um, uh, like you know value to the lambda function and as well as the power let's say i am having a uh, like you no know, alias function alias okay the function alias is let's say value value equals to i'm just giving power of power is like you know let's say two the exponent i'm just giving is two okay now while calling this i'm just giving like you no know, print value of okay now here value of i'm just giving uh, let's say 10 okay so now if i'm running this program here you can see what is giving like 100 if i'm giving let's say value of 5 okay value of 5 now here if you see what it is giving like it is giving 25 if i'm giving value of if i'm giving like you know value of 3 now it is going to give me it is going to give me nine, right? So this is how it is giving. Now, the simplified version of this, let's say if it is looking complex, let us simplify it here. Now I'm just going to sum, sum like I'm just giving like no power. I'm not, I'm not going to give anything here. I'm just going to give here like now two, hard coded value two, okay? Now, while calling the value, we are, like the, what we have actually assigned to the value, value is nothing but the power function. But power function, while calling power function, whatever the value, whatever the argument we are actually going to pass, because lambda needs one argument over here. Whatever the value, value we are actually going to pass, what it is going to do? It is going to like you know, do the exponent operation, right? This is like you know, the 10 to the power 2. 5 to the power 2. So this kind of operation also it can actually do. Like no need to explicitly pass 2 here. So now if I'm running this program, here you can see, here you can see it is actually giving the same result. What if, like why I have given like, you know, uh, the 2 in the other program, but here I have not given anything, okay? So now if I'm not giving, I'm hard coding. Let us see like you know, how to make it dynamic in the other program. Like in the other program, I've just given num. Now, I wanted like the exponent to be two, and I'm just giving two. Now, if I'm giving like you know, the power should be three, okay, three, then uh, I can specify three. And if I'm giving like you know the value as print value of here it is, value is actually five. Now here you see the result, okay. So now here you can see 125. So this is the region like you know we can use lambda within the function so this is how it works so these are the use cases like of the basic lambda function lambda operation there are complex lambda uh, functions as well and it will take time unless you understand the concept core concepts of lambda you cannot interpret it okay so these are the use cases of like you know the lambda function basically okay so that, that's how it is actually working. So now let us see like what is our next topic. Just give me a second. Here we go. Okay. So now the next thing I'm just going to talk about like you now we'll take like a you know, few more minutes to understand like you now what is a filter, what is a what is a map map method and what is a reduce method okay so filter map and reduce these are the powerful functions and which are available in python and if you know these concepts 
then the less number of code you are actually going to write if uh, like you know why we are actually learning part of this session is like you may be maintaining some scripts where uh, like the you know, filter map and reduce are actually being used so now how to interpret like you know the filter map and reduce without knowing the concept you're not able to interpret it so that's the reason why we are actually learning filter filter method and map method and reduce method and these are like you now only the reduce it is defined in the function tools fun tools we call it as actually reduce is part of fun tools fun tools fun tools like you now it's a it's a module and where we have like you know the references uh, sorry the method like you now reduce method is there apart from that filter and map you can actually uh, use use it as is that is like you now inbuilt functions so now let us let us understand like you now what is the use case of filter and what is the syntax basically right so now filter the syntax is very very simple like we can actually specify like you now filter followed by you remember guys in the filter like you now how we have passed uh, the function name as actually parameter in the sorted method similarly in the filter method we have to pass the function name okay function name here and it could be any function name what as per your like you know, definition as per your business requirement and all so and then we need to actually specify the sequence okay so like this is the syntax we need to call filter then function name and then sequence like the question is what is the use case of filter right let's say for example we have a list of country names and my requirement is like i am having a very big list or very the sequence is very very big i want to filter and use it based on my requirement okay so now in that case filter is the solution so let us let us do one thing let us learn it by example so now let me uh, let me write a program to make you familiar with like no filter so just give me a minute let me close all these things and then we can jump into a new program now new python file and here we have like no filter filter function okay filter function and let's say in the filter function i'm just going to do one thing i'll just give you an example of like you know a, i'm just going to in this example i'm just going to consider a list which is containing strings like a list of strings basically or we can for simply i can actually execute like a country names okay cn is country names and then i can specify here like right india australia australia then new zealand then new zealand then we do have us uk us then uk and then france okay so now this is this is my country names so a favorite list like now we are using it like now pretty often now my requirement is i want to apply a filter on this particular list let us let us assume you are not familiar with any of these methods like filter and anything you are not familiar what you are actually familiar is like you know you are familiar with like the traversing and finding out on the values now think my requirement is i want to i want to print or i want to get the list of country names it starts with capital s u how do i do it i can specify like now for for c n in c n s then if i can say like you know c n dot starts with c n dot starts with u then in that case i want like you now print c n okay so now what it is going to do it is going to give me us and uk what if what if i want like you now for example i want to do the same thing using filter i want to do the same thing using filter how do i do it that is that is what i'm going to tell you okay what is the use case of filter here let us define a function let's say i'm having a define let's say my cn in the my cn in the my cn function what we are going to do is we are actually going to 
to like you know take 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 the input let's say for example here um, yeah, i'm just going to do one thing my cn in the my cn if uh, okay i need to pass a element right let's say for example cn country name and then if country name starts with this and remember when using the filter we can define let's say filter here we go right so filter i just mentioned filter function name the function name should return true and false for each element let's say for example in our case the sequence is nothing but country names okay our sequence is not country names and i'm just taking it here okay and the, for each item in this sequence what kind of sequence is this is a list list is a sequence tuple is a sequence right set is a sequence right so now here you can see what what is the definition filter function name sequence right so from each item from the given sequence in this case it's a list we have to verify whether our condition is true like in this case what is your condition a condition is country name starts with you if yes then it should return true or else it should return false and based on that criteria we are going to print the values now let us look at here if cn that starts with u then instead of print we should not actually print actually we should actually return true return true okay else we should return false return false that's it so my cn is done my cn and it should pass like you know i want to remember the cn country name and then it is this definition is already done now what i'm going to do here is like you know print uh trip it returns a filter object first let us try to understand like the what is a filter object and then we'll uh, identify like you know how to get the values out of it okay so now look at here so print i'm just saying like filter what to filter based on what i'm going to filter now filter using my cn function uh, is there ambiguity in the my cn no right here yeah. my cn function and guys remember in the sorted we have used the function name not the function call we have not used parenthesis we should not use parenthesis here okay and then my cn followed by what what is my sequence my sequence is cns my sequence is cns now it should actually print a filter object let us see like what is the output now it is saying like it is a filter object now if i want to do a casting of filter object and ideally it is possible to cast and if i'm running this here you can see it is actually giving you a send uk so filter is done this is very easy see like we are having a function which is returning true and false based on our matching criteria and we are using just one line and then storing it now what if what if you want to actually you want to print let's say sorry store the values of selected country names right let's say our selection country name selected cns selected country names equals to filter cns okay so now i'm just giving this this is my filter object we can actually do this and then print again like here we need to give a list of selected cns okay now if i'm running this if i'm running this here you can see you can see it here you just said okay and why i have given a list you can ask me why you are actually using a list now here selected cns if i do it is nothing but a filter object filter object always remember filter returns filter object map will return map object this is the this is the use case like in python everything is actually object string is object tuple is object like everything is actually object file object function object and everything is objects okay so now here it is a filter object now filter object can be casted let's say for example what if you are actually going to type cast it to a tuple whether it is possible let us see whether it is possible and all like whether we can actually get a tuple of like my our selections here you can see this is a tuple so filter object can be casted because it's just a sequence you can cast it as per your requirement okay so this is a we can actually identify we can actually identify let's say for example this is cast into tuple and then you realize okay you don't need a tuple you need a list you can still do that okay you can still do that 
now here we go you can uh, list up okay it is selected cn so it needs to be doing here commented right so now here you can see so the filter object you can see it here like now this is how you can actually cast it so this is all about like now how you are actually going to um, going to return the filters and then cast it okay accordingly and that's all about like in the use case of filter the next method we are actually going to learn is known as map okay the mapping basically now let me do one thing i'll just write a program and uh, we'll go ahead with the mapping example now new wait and find okay before we start with the mapping i think i have actually skipped one one section that is the recursion so let us have a function recursion example function recursion okay or recursive function okay recursive function example What do you mean by function recursion? Right in the function recursion, guys, remember one topic which is not here. This is like the recursive function. So recursive function is calling the function itself, like within the body, calling the function itself within the body. Like there are use cases like where you need recursion, but recursion has limitation. Like you know, we need a lot of memory and then like you know, the resources. Basically, I can say. Like you know, whenever you are actually dealing with recursion, be careful. Otherwise, you'll be like you know, experiencing unwanted errors, and then uh, you need to actually handle it explicitly, right? You know, as a programmer. And there are certain cases where you can actually uh, implement recursion. Okay. So I'm just not going to write a factorial program or something because wherever you go, in which book you see, like you know, C, C++, Java, anywhere, like you know, for the beginner. If you are trying to understand, like you know, how the recursion is actually working, then factorial is actually one of the all-time favorite example. So I'm not going to write a factorial function, but what is my uh, objective here is to make you familiar with, like, you know, what is the concept of recursion. So let us do one thing. Let us run through the example and understand what is recursion. Okay. Let's say I'm having a function define demo, define demo, and here I'm just giving, like, you know. Uh, demo here and then uh, I'm just printing like in you know, a hello world or else I can actually print like this print hello world print hello world and I'm just going to write the function in such a way that we should experience error and then proceed further so demo is calling demo demo is in the demo body and then I'm just calling the function okay but if you're not calling this function no error if I'm not calling this function, no error, because error will be actually experienced when the piece of code is actually getting executed. So I've just defined it. I'm not calling it, right? So I need to call to experience the error. Now let us see, to experience the error, you can actually definitely see it here. It is saying like now, it is printing. Initially, it is printing hello world, hello world, hello world multiple times. And how many times? I'll tell you like now how to identify like now how many times it is printing hello world. Right, and then after that, what is happening here? You can see it is saying like in a previous line repeated 993 times, and then this this has been terminated, and it is saying maximum recursion depth is actually exceeded while calling the Python object. So, what is the maximum maximum depth of of the recursion? This is the this is the error message like in a recursion error. So, this program is actually generating a recursion error. So now the question is, how would I know what is the maximum recursion, right? So now here, I'm just going to tell you one thing, and uh, like now we'll be in the upcoming sessions, we'll be exploring like you now the system libraries, uh, modules, right? Various modules, and then we'll be getting familiar with imports, like you now the packages and all that. I'm just going to cover that. Now for now, I'm just giving like you now a quick understanding. Whenever you want to use any modules explicitly what you need to do is you need to import it like you know, i'm just giving like the sys okay so now i'm just printing your print okay now sys dot 
good let's say recursion right so here i can say get recursion or set recursion get recursion get recursion get max one moment i forgot it actually there is a there is a method which we can actually use i think it is a recursion limit set recursion limit and get recursion limit i believe so let us see get recursion limit i believe so uh, yeah get recursion limit okay and here i'm just printing this is the maximum limit let's say if i'm running this program again running this program again like you know with commenting it and then running it here you can see here it is saying that the maximum recursion can actually happen actually as thousand if i want to set it let's say i have just given like a sys dot set recursion limit i'm just giving as like so 5000 again at 500 or 5000 as per your requirement you can actually define that okay but again uh, even if it is giving 5000 it is going to give give us the error like now after 5000 times for this program specifically if i'm running this program here you can see here you can see it is saying like now it has been changed to 5000 now let us call demo if i'm calling demo definitely we are going to get the error only thing is it will be printing the hello world 5000 times it is printing right the recursion will be going on and then it has finished and then some error message because these are like not finished with exit code something right we have given the maximum recursion system is unable to handle this okay as i mentioned like we should not actually play with the recursion limit this is for your information only and don't change don't do anything like now with the recursion limit and recursion we should should not use like now in this type of cases okay now let me tell you one more use case of like a recursion where we can use recursion effectively let's say i'm just going to write this demo function here this is the demo function and then i'm just going to put a condition uh, like how many times i want to execute this demo function let's say i'm just giving like number of times num or n just simply n i can specify here and then here what i'm going to do i'm just going to tell like if n greater than zero then a print hello world print hello world and then here i'm just giving here i'm just giving like you know um something like n n value i'm going to give as n minus one n minus equals to one i'm just reducing the value and then calling the demo function again perfect so now demo of n again okay so now here we go so now if i'm giving like you know print demo five times now i'm giving like demo print five times so now demo will be called five times now control shift up 10 if you do now here you can see demo is called five times the real time use case i'm just telling like in this type of scenario let's say you are starting your application process and you want to um, like in every 10 second interval you want to actually do a recursion and check if the process is up like for five times you can use a recursion over there either you can actually use a file loop call the function then return true or based on based on the like not the return value the process is up return true if the process is down return false right so based on that you can actually control it within the loop or else you can control it within the uh, recursion part also like this is one of the use case okay and then the second use case what i what what i can actually show you let's say define uh, my series this is my series and i'm just going to give a number here this is name and then here i'm just giving like you know if n greater than zero n greater than zero and then i'm just giving like in you know, a print print n print n and then uh, n equals to n minus one okay n equals to n minus one then my series i'm just calling again the my series function with n now here i'm just calling my series my series function let's say i'm just giving like you know print of n and here n equals to n equals to space 
so if you remember end separator file and all these things okay so now end equals to space okay so now here i've just given this and then calling the my series with that now look at here this recursion i'm just running the program here you can see maximum recursion depth okay y maximum recursion depth so here we are given like you know n equals to 10 my series of n my series of n okay that's fine so it should be like you know here in the if itself okay so now if i'm going to call this function if i'm going to call this function here you can see 10 9 8 7 6 5 4 3 2 1 so this is how we are actually generating a range you can also generate the range accordingly just think about here if you want to do the same thing without using recursion what you would have done like you know you can you can you can actually do like this let's say number equals 10 i'm just putting together all the options in front of you and then uh, here you can see while num i think this bracket is not required definitely and num greater than zero here I can say print n or num here, right? I'm just copy pasting it num, num, then end, right? Num, then end. And then what we can actually do here is uh, we can definitely specify num uh, minus one, minus equals to one. So this is augmentation operator. If you remember this technical naming, it's known as augmentation operator, right? Uh, so now, minus and like you know just minus one then undersign so that's all about it and if i'm running this program and to have a separator we can actually specify print asterisk maybe asterisk like you no know, 50 times something like this i'm running this program here you see uh, okay we need to print a new line too because we are giving like an end equal to space there now, if I'm running this program, Control Shift uh, F10 to run this program, here you can see it does the same thing. Either you do it using while loop, or do it using recursion, or do it using like you know, any other approach, whatever you are familiar with. But end of the day, it, it does the same thing. Okay, so this is recursion example tool. Let me put it here, like Python, new Python file. A recursion function example two. Okay, so now here we go. That's it. And we are actually left with few more concepts. And uh, like now, uh, we do not have enough time for today. So recursion is done. So what we are actually going to do is like you now filter is done as well, right? And map reduce generators and decorators. Decorators is a advanced concept. Uh, decorators and decorators chaining but i will give you the basic understanding right if you have actually seen in the python codes if you're already working right you can see add the red symbol followed by this okay if you're working on flask or any other like in you know, a um, advanced python scripts right you can see the decorators so let us do one thing let us wind up for the uh, for the day let us wind up for the day and then 